Welcome to On The Fence, the show that's about helping you decide whether or not to spend your hard-earned money on the biggest and possibly best releases in bite-sized form. One tasty mouthful. Coming right, <laughs> coming right at Jesus Christ, that's so gross. Was that the joke? <laughs> No! <laughs> oh, I just kind of got into the flow of things and then I just realised how dirty it sounded. <laughs> One tasty mouthful coming right at you. <laughs> this is already off to a horrendous start. <laughs> Nick. Hans. Get your tissues ready. Because I hear the devil may cry. That was the joke. For sure, a piece of tumbleweed just real fast, man. <laughs> Nick, we are looking at the f- kind of fifth installment <laughs> of the Devil May Cry series. Yes. Which you have been playing. I have. Are you ready? I'm constantly ready. Are your tissues ready? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Same crap, different day. Nick, what is Devil May Cry 5? So, as you mentioned there, Devil May Cry is a return to the core Devil May Cry series after a brief uh, reboot thing that Ninja Theory did. Capcom decided to go back to original Dante and all that, uh, take it back in-house and develop uh, the first Devil May Cry game since I think 4 came out in 2009? So this is 10 years on since 4, and a lot of fans of the reboot was dis- divisive. Uh, I liked it. I know some people didn't. Uh, but this seems to be a massive return to form for the whole Devil May Cry franchise. Like a lot of the promotional material and trailers coming out makes a big deal about the fact there are three protagonists. Why is that? In Devil May Cry 4, you had Dante and Nero as the dual protagonists. And while it was cool, um, they definitely played very similarly. And it made... While it was nice to play as Dante after you play as Nero for the first bit of the game, it didn't really feel like it changed much of the game. They've completely thrown that out the window for this one, and each of the three protagonists plays pretty differently. Dante and Nero still have some similarities, but they are relatively quite different, and then V is a whole other thing altogether. So Nero plays much like your standard Devil May Cry. He has a sword, he has a gun, and that's kind of it. You do your combos, you do these pretty cool strings, and Nero's big thing is his mechanical robot arm called the Devil Breaker. Uh, kind of looks Big Boss-esque from Metal Gear Solid Five, and those will have different abilities. You'll pick up different ones throughout levels, so you'll have one that's like just shoots a bolt of lightning, you'll have one that actually flies off your arm and homes in on an enemy, and those are really cool. They feed into the combos really well. Uh, Dante's playstyle involves him kind of switching stances and changing weapons, So Dante will get a whole host of different weapons throughout the game and you can switch stance so you'll have one stance where you have a really good dodge roll, you'll have one stance where your guns do a lot more damage and his playstyle is a lot more about knowing when to switch weapons and switch stances to make the most out of your combos and get them going even further and further. But then V is a complete takeoff for the Devil May Cry franchise where he's essentially a ranged fighter and he summons like familiars so he has a bird, a panther and this huge hulking monstrosity that he can summon in fights and they do the dam- they do the attacks for him. And it's really weird at first, but it's really it like they've made it work really well and it feels like a really cool logical step for the Devil May Cry like fighting formula. And it makes V, I'd say it took a while to get used to him, but V is probably my favourite person to play as in the game so far. Just because he is very unique. It's such a departure from what a lot of these action games do. Nick, what is the story of Devil May Cry 5? So Devil May Cry sees you, uh, essentially Dante and Nero have kind of teamed up in their the demon hunting business as in the under the Devil May Cry name. And game uh, kind of jumps forward and back in time a bit, so it's actually really cool. The menu itself is like a timeline, and you'll see like, alright, here's the day and the date, and the missions will show up on that timeline as you start doing them. And it's actually, I think it's, it batters home that effect of you skipping through time really well. But essentially the game starts with uh, V... We're essentially hiring Dante and saying, alright, th- this demon's going to show up in a couple of days and we need to stop him. Uh, Dante decides to do it without Nero, which Nero takes offence to, because Nero has just recently... His arm has just been ripped off, hence the mechanical arm I mentioned before. Eventually, it starts with the first bit of the game is Nero kind of fighting his way back towards after Dante gets defeated by this demon. And I'll not spoil anything about characters and stuff like that, but 
eventually they uh, all three characters do eventually meet up in the end and that's kind of the bit of the story I've just gotten to where all three characters have just meet, met up for the first time and but yeah overall the story is really cool it's phenomenally well acted as well I think the voice acting is really cool and all the motion capture stuff they've done for the game is also really cool and it's really cool to see because Devil May Cry was typically not a big budget game before but this one feels like a proper triple A budget was put behind it to make it like absolutely top notch. Do you have any idea how many times I've heard that exact same line? Devil May Cry kind of uh, popularized the stylish action games. We've had a, a bunch of them since. For example, Bayonetta. View our Game Club episode on that right now. Uh, but what sets us apart from those other stylish action games? Bear with me as I make this comparison, but Devil May Cry 5 reminds me a lot of the 2016 Doom remake or game. It's taken this stylus action genre, which is kind of, obviously, we wouldn't want to say Devil May Cry got left behind, but it obviously it originated and other games came along and kind of stole it thunder. Devil May Cry takes, uh, similar to how Doom kind of took everything from those old style first person shooters and didn't really evolve upon them, just really properly refined them and brought them in the, like, 2016 or this decade's graphics. Devil May Cry 5 has done a lot of the same. It hasn't added much, like, revolutionary for this game, but it's just refined those core mechanics so well that it feels absolutely incredible to play. It's really fun. Like, the combos come out really smoothly, and I know when we mentioned we played Bayonetta, there was a lot of... we, Both of us, not so much IOI and Alex, had nitpicks with it. Those nitpicks I had with Bayonetta aren't present in Devil May Cry because it's refined those mechanics so well that it doesn't need doesn't feel the need to add a lot of these extra... Uh, do these perfectly timed dodges and stuff like that because you're doing those anyway because it feels so good to play. So Nick, if I was on the fence about Devil May Cry 5, what would you say to me? Even if you're not a massive fan of these stylish character action games, whatever you want to call them, I think Devil May Cry is a near enough a must play game. I haven't played a game in a long time that has felt this fun to play. It has me like really chomping at the bit to get back to play it a lot of the times and I can see myself already playing through this multiple times on I know there's like really special difficulties like oh you take one hit that's it over and then there's also the clip side where like all right you take one hit but enemies also take one hit and I can see myself replaying through this multiple times as especially in levels where they give you the choices play as multiple characters everything about DMC5 just screams we know the type of game we wanted to make and we have knocked it completely out of the fucking park. It works so well from the execution to the presentation. Everything is done amazingly and everything is just turned up to 11. Awesome. So that is Nick's opinion on Devil May Cry 5 currently available on Microsoft Windows, PS4 and Xbox One ranging from £40 to £130 if you want the deluxe edition. And if you have some serious spare cash to spend. <laughs> some people have no life and too much money. But thank you very much, Nick, for joining me. No problem.